as I'm going along and I'll pick those up at the end. So I will move on to the next slide. So this first slide here, I should probably explain as well. That's just our Highlands Climate Festival logo. Um, so it's just a nice kind of fresh, clean, modern logo. Um, and we're working in partnership with Highland Adapts to deliver this climate festival. So we wanted something that kind of represented both of us um, without using our own logos. So we've used the color from the Climate Hub logo and some colors from the Highland Adapts logo as well. So I will just move on to the next slide where I'm just going to talk a little bit about the hub. So some of you may be aware of the hub, um, but I'll kick off with a little bit of information about us anyway. Um, so we were set up in September 2021 to firstly complete a pathfinder phase. And this is where we mapped all community led climate action in the Highlands and the Northern Isles. So we completed our pathfinder phase at the end of March 2022, and we are funded by the Scottish Government for three years. So we're really here to help empower and support communities by weaving and embedding climate action through everything we do. So this includes helping through any step of a climate action project through the design, development and delivery of a project to help reduce bureaucracy throughout the sector. We kind of act as a middleman where groups can turn to for support and advice, whether that's an established community group wishing to carry out a new climate action project or new and emerging groups. So part of our function as a hub is to also provide training and examples of best practice. So if you are familiar with us, you might know that we've hosted a couple of online events so far, showing examples of best practice throughout circular economy projects, community food growing and community fridges and larders. We're also developing our own carbon literacy training tailored specifically to our wonderful Highlands and Islands communities. So we're working hard to be able to offer further training opportunities to community groups and help them on the journey to being climate ready. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the Highland Climate Festival and the kind of information that we can offer you so far. Um, there are some exciting launches coming up during the festival that I can't quite talk about yet, so I'll talk you through a little bit about it. So um, I think I've actually zoomed on a slide. Yeah, sorry. I, um, I'll talk a little bit about Highland Adapts first. So you might have heard us talk about Highland Adapts before. They're a Highland Council-led initiative with several partners such as the NHS, Nature Scott, Changeworks and Zero Waste Scotland, Forestry and Land Scotland and more. So they're looking at how the Highlands can adapt and mitigate towards climate change. The Hub is working closely with Highland Adapts, so we both came on online around about the same time in 2021. We kind of think of Highland, and, Highland Adapts like an umbrella covering all sectors within the Highlands, from the public to private and third sector. So the Hub is very much embedded throughout the partnership to cover the community and third sector. So I've just included a little picture on this slide about how the Highland Adapts model works. The team at the Hub being embedded throughout the comms team, the climate advocates, the programme board and the engagement team and the core groups. So Highland Adapts has a wide range of organisations from local to regional and national throughout each team. So we're working closely with Highland Adapts to lead um, of solutions to climate change. It gives us a fantastic opportunity as well to find solutions throughout every sector in the Highlands too. So now I will move on to speak about the Climate Festival. Um, so the Climate Festival is taking place this year and it's the first Highland Climate Festival and we're really excited to bring this opportunity to our amazing communities in the Highlands. So the festival will be taking place between the 25th of June to the 3rd of July. We're hosting this festival to really celebrate our communities in the Highlands. As life is starting to get back to normal for a lot of us, we feel it's a really great time to have some community celebrations. So the festival is really kicking off with the Senior Leaders Summit being held on the 27th of June. So this is being held in Inverness with leaders across the public, private and third sector being invited along to sign a climate charter. The invites have already gone out and we're excited to see leaders making a commitment towards taking climate action. So the climate charter that I just mentioned there was developed by the Highland Adapts Climate Advocates team with a charter that will be available to sign throughout all sectors and by individuals as well, making a promise to take climate action and prepare for a climate ready Highland. 
We're also going for hosting large community celebrations on the 2nd of July. Um, so that is looking at having some gala days across the Highlands um, and to really showcase some of these exciting launches that are coming up throughout the festival. And of course, within that, we want to have a really nice kind of geographical spread across the Highlands with a range of events taking place throughout every single day of the week of the Climate Festival. <laughs> So I'll just move on to talk about some of the kind of events that we're, we're looking for for the Climate Festival. Um, so if you're already planning an event around the time of the festival, we'd be more than happy to hear from you and include it in our programme of events that we can advertise as well. So we're really looking for anything that really celebrates our communities and champions the message of localism. So that could be a community market, an open day of your community garden, a green health walk, a bike repair workshop, a community cycle, a swishing event, any kind of workshop that promotes the themes of climate action, a climate cafe, a webinar, an online talk about climate change or biodiversity, any kind of event that educates about climate change or a celebration with local foods within your community that really celebrates localism and kind of champions your local businesses too. So we really want communities to host or stage events that are relevant to them and relevant to their communities. So I'll just move on to talk a little bit about the funding as well that the Hub has available. So we have up to £1,000 available for a kind of gala event that you can host throughout the Climate Festival. So for the £1,000 funding award, we're really looking for something big that really celebrates and encompasses a lot of your community, something that's really going to appeal to everyone. And it is more like a kind of gala day where you have local food um, and you have some other stuff going on there as well. So we've got up to £500 as well for kind of smaller events. So if you want to host a workshop, if you want to host an open day or um, you want to host some online events as well. So groups must be based in the Highlands to um, access this funding. And the funding is really for carrying out any kind of event or community celebration. And we do have the funding application live on our website right now. And our website is www.nhclimatehub.co.uk. Um, so you can check out the funding application there. And if you'd like to submit a funding application, one of our development officers will be in contact with you um, to talk about your funding application. So I'll just move on a little bit about the kind of marketing and branding for the Climate Festival. So um, if I don't zoom past. So this is just a kind of little snapshot of the marketing and branding. As you can see, um, you might have seen that post on social media that we put out about this information event. Um, so this is the branding that we're going for for the Climate Festival. Um, so we will be producing a programme of events which will go live on our website and it will be included in all of our social media channels. So if there's something that you're looking at hosting, then we can stick that in our program of events and we can advertise that for you as well. So the hub is also here to um, do some branding for you. So as you can see, the little kind of social media post slash poster there, um, our development officers at the hub, if you're hosting an event, we can create posters and flyers or social media posts for you um, that are along this kind of line of branding. Um, and we've also got the hashtags on the slide too, where we can pick up social media posts and reshare. So we're going for the hashtags of Love Local, Love Highland and Highland Climate Festival. So um, I'll open up to some questions. It's just a very kind of brief overview of the kind of things that we're looking for for the Climate Festival um, and just to give you some ideas as well if you'd like to host something. Um, so I hope that was helpful for you as well. Um, I've also got our um, inquiries email address here. So if you've got any questions as well, especially after this event, you can get in contact with us. Um, our website's on there as well and all of our social media channels. So if you don't already, you can give us a like or a follow on our social media channels too to keep up to date with us. So I'll just stop sharing screen and I will open up for any questions that you might have. Please just feel free to, if you've got a question, please just feel free to shout out.
Yep, Anna. Uh, hi, it just occurred to me, the funding that's available for events, is that just for charity, charities or is that for business as well? That's just for charities. Yeah, Absolutely. the hub just funds charities. Yeah, okay, okay. Garance, I'll go to you next. Yeah, hi there. Um, so the festival's starting on the 25th of June. That's the same day as the, the Green Health uh, event in Thurso. Are you tying in with that or is it is it all part or is it all separate? She's, she's smiling, Garance, because I've come off mute um, and I'm trying not to talk very much. I'm not very well at the moment. Um, yes, we are tying in with that. So Thurso are very much... Um, with my Thurso Community Development Trust hat on, we are very much, um, we've got a full programme of events going from the 25th of June to the 3rd of July. And we start with the Green Health Day. So yes, we're working with ILSA in partnership with the Climate Festival, the Green Health Day, and then all of you as providers. So I'll be getting in touch with you about that. Brilliant. So then we can do something because, um, I mean, hopefully the forest will have, well, you know, we'll have a presence there on the, the 25th. I'm not sure what that will be just yet. Uh, it'd be nice to develop something for that day and then we can have an event later on. And would I be able to access funding, say, um, to do a story walk in the forest or something like that? Would that kind of tie in with the aims and objectives? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Brilliant. I'll go um, and I, and I'm very much, I'm very much hoping that the forest has a presence on the 25th of June. So <laughs> I'm just a bit slow in getting started with it because I've been off all week. So, um, but yes, for the Green Health Day and yes, we're applying for the the story walks. Then yes, that's fine. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Can I, I just come over to you, Anne, as well? Oh, yeah, I need to go. Hello. Um, how can I get local businesses to have an invite to the Leaders Summit? I was thinking of the business organisation and Sky and also the Housing Association because we've been working with them. So the Senior Leaders Summit is being arranged by Emma Whitham at Highland Adapts. Um, so if you'd like some kind of local senior kind of figures invited along to that, um, I can pass that on to Emma, I can CC you into an email. Um, I think I've definitely got your email address, so I can pass that on to Emma and I can CC you into an email and I can get her to get in touch with you for that. No, that's great because I've told them about it, but I thought it'd be quite good if they got an invite as well. <laughs> Thank you. No bother. Um, I'll just come over to you, Evie. Um, yeah, we just had a quick question about um, different community groups within the same community applying for funding. Um, so we're based in Alapil, and would it be that there would only be one allocation of funding available to Alapil, or could different community groups apply for funding? I think, do you want me to answer that, Bethany? Um, no, yeah, you can't. Can't. D depends on what on what you're looking to do so um like pr probably not we probably couldn't allocate like two lots of the thousand pounds do you know yeah. what i mean to, to yeah. all of them. but if you were looking to do smaller kind of events and i do have to emphasize as well is that you know like like we've got a pot of funding and um, once it's gone it's gone and we'd like to try and get things spread out as much as we can so be realistic in what you're putting in for you know if you don't need a thousand pounds to do it don't put in for a thousand pounds to do yeah, it you know? yeah. um but yeah if it was like smaller events and you were kind of joining on to each other then yeah th there would be no issue with there being more than one funding application coming from a place and um, yeah. i think what we're really looking to do is that we get quite a good spread across highland of events going on and um, i mean my dream would be that we definitely make sure that we have sort of in each and of our each of our counties that we've got something that's going on in each area so that there is you know the aim of the festival is to get people engaged in climate action and actually to try and get those people who have maybe never engaged in anything to do with climate before so that's why we're kind of looking for a really good range of events and why we've gone with the kind of love local love highland as well because if we that can be an entry way for a lot of people into into more into climate action is that actually if they're supporting localism, we saw that during the pandemic is that um, people really, really want to support local communities, but actually supporting localism is that there's climate action within that. Um, so 
yeah, it depends on what you're looking to do, but yes, definitely for um, like one place can submit for more than one funding application. That's not a problem. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Is there any more questions about anything at all? What I'll also emphasise is that if you have something that's going on during that week of the 25th of June to the 3rd of July, and it might be it might be just something that you do in your normal kind of day-to-day -day work sort of thing. Um, so I, I'm kind of half looking at Evie is that, you know, if you've got a little unpacked, if you've got that going out, like that's, and that's what something you would be doing. You know, it's the same as like socially growing. I'll be putting socially growing into the programme somewhere, come along and shop in our zero waste shop because it's there. Same as, you know, done it is there all the time, Garance. Green gym, yeah. But yeah. Green gym's on it. Let's, yeah, let's just shed a spotlight on everything that we have that's going on. Um, I've done this a few times now with various different festivals. When the first one that I ever was involved in that was kind of like this was um, we did a surfing festival here in Thurjo. We had no, um, we had basically high asked us to do it around a, surf, a big surf competition that was happening. We had 10 days notice that we needed to do it. And they wanted an arts and culture festival that went around this big, huge surfing competition. Um, and we kind of went, we don't have any events. We don't have anything that's going on. And what we did was we went around all of the pubs. We went around just about everybody that we could think of as what did you have on during these dates? And that's what became our programme. So it doesn't need to be, you know, it's it, the, the reason for this is like, like, yes, let's get some more events happening and get them happening in that kind of um, concentrated level of time. But actually you could be doing things which are just your normal bread and butter, the normal activities of your community group, your community organisation, and let's get them into that programme and let's shine a spotlight onto them. So don't be thinking that you have to go and create yourself a whole pile of work, basically, is what I'm saying, is there's lots of things that you are already doing, all of you, which are brilliant and marvellous, and submit them in as an event. I'll actually add onto the website today to just submit in an event that does, maybe doesn't require funding, and then we will add that onto the programme. Lauren, do you have a question? I have a funny feeling that, that I might know what your question is going to come along with. <laughs> oh, you're on mute. Sorry. Um, mine actually isn't so much a question, but it's just generally for people. Sorry, no, sorry John, I already know you know, but for people who don't know about our project, and it's happening in Caithness, but can kind of, I guess, include Sutherland as well. But uh, through Life Arts Centre in Caithness, we're just about to launch a project called the Unexpected Garden, which is a kind of touring garden, and it's going to tour around four locations in uh, Caithness throughout the summer. And I think on those dates, oh, I have been working on this all day, so my head's a bit foggy, but I think on those dates the trailer is going to be in Livestar. So I just kind of wanted to reiterate that for me, the programming is still very much in the stage of what does the like the community want the garden to be like we're going to host events and they're going to be fun events but I'm also very enthusiastic about people um telling us what they want from the garden and what they want to learn and really like I want the gardens to be for the communities and they kind of steer it in a direction so I just kind of wanted to put it out that if there's any groups around Caithness and Sutherland that want to reach out for me to do things around the garden because it seems like a kind of perfect colliding of these two kind of um projects then definitely get in touch with me through the life art uh website and we can use the garden as like a hosting space or do like work in the garden just whatever i just wanted to put that out there if you didn't know that it was happening and that i would be very open to any sort of local um collaborations around this so yeah that's just a kind of introduction and just um what we, what we hope to do around the climate um festival I think I'm very excited. I've seen the, the photos this week while I've been lying doing nothing of the lorry with the big side on it now. I'm very excited, Lauren, to see what's going on. Uh, um, yeah, like, I'm excited. Especially as I know exist. that there's lots of wonderful growing that's happened as well. Oh, I know for <laughs> Sharon. I hope she's she's probably desperate to get it on the road and out of her hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excited for it to exist. Anna. Uh, hi, Lauren, have you got a, like a, a web page or something to share about your project? Um, yes, I can put it uh, in the link. It's kind of just being updated as we go along, but there is one that exists, so I can 
I'll try and put it in the chat before. Rachel, yes, we have a recording. <laughs> Is there any more questions at all? Um, just as Joan said as well, we are just recording this session, so um, we can get it up on our social media channels and on our YouTube as well. And um, if you're all quite happy to as well, we can send out the recording to you once we've got that all up on YouTube um, just after the session. Grant? Yeah, Adam. Um, one question, I guess there's quite a few um, kind of groups that aren't formally constituted, like um, that run the local market here in Essen, for example, um, who might be interested in a bit of funding to tie in a market event with the festival um, and advertise it as such. Um, would they not be able to get funding because they're not a constituted charity or might it be a bit flexy? Um, we, we can be flexible to a point, Adam, but they would need to, so they don't need to be a registered charity, um, you know, like kind of community groups, so and they would need to have a bank account in their own name. That would be the main provision sort of thing. Um, right. But then if it was, so, and I mean, um, Amanda, one of our other development officers, she had been going, um, kind of Googling and looking as much as we could because we wanted, that was an area that we really wanted to have included within the programme was where, where all we've got community markets. Um, so um, if it was a case of that they really needed some a little bit of funding to help them to support putting that market on during those dates, then I wouldn't say no to, I would be prepared to be flexible. If they don't have a bank account in their own name, I would be prepared to be flexible if they could come through so say Ascent Development Trust, like you could submit more than one an application. So you could submit an application for them and then we we'll make sure that the funding then goes to them. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, we can be flexible up until a point, but the main sort of provision is having a bank account in your own name, really. Thank you. Um, one other question while I'm at it, just a silly question. There was swishing events listed on the list. What's a swishing event? Can I hand back to you, Bethany? Carry on. <laughs> yeah, so um, a swishing event is where, like, basically you take along, like, clothes that you no longer wear, you no longer want, um, and other people take along clothes that they no longer wear, no longer want, and it's basically for free, you can just swap clothes. So if you see something that you like, you can pick that up and go, I'm having this, I like it. It's a, it's a way to basically reduce um, some of our consumption of fast fashion and just... Um, keep the circular economy going by um, swapping clothes, basically. I think that's explaining it in its simplest form. Thank you. Great. Not heard it called that before. But... I've got a couple of members of staff at the Trust that are going to be working on a, a swishing type fashion show for that week. So you're more than welcome back up to Thursday if you'd like to add them to it. <laughs> and then you can see one in action. Nice. Is there any more questions at all? I hope I've covered enough um, information today to give everyone some stuff to go on. But of course, if there's any more questions that you can think of after, then just pop an email on inquiries at nhclimatehub.co.uk and we can get back to you about that as well. Um, so yeah, we will be putting out some more information shortly about the climate festivals. Um, we're still very much in the planning phases of it and working with Highlands Adapts to kind of bring it all together. So 